In 1991, nine sets of remains were found. There were 11 people that were killed in Ekaterinburg that night. But rumors soon started to circulate that there may have been a survivor. Two sets of remains were still missing. Everyone knows the story of the Romanovs' tragic downfall. But what you think you know is wrong. The legend of the escaped Princess Anastasia? A complete fantasy. The hope that the young heir Alexei survived? A lie. Science has now spoken and its verdict is absolute. DNA analysis has solved the century-old mystery once and for all. But the findings are not good. They point to a level of brutality and a desperate cover-up that is almost unbelievable. The most shocking fact is what science revealed about their final horrifying moments. The end of a dynasty. In 1991, as the Soviet Union crumbled, a dark secret buried for over 70 years finally came to light. In a desolate patch of forest outside Yekaterinburg, a team of amateur investigators, guided by a geologist's long hidden notes, unearthed a shallow, muddy pit. What they found inside was a chaotic jumble of human remains, nine skeletons, their bones stained by time and soil. This was the moment the world had been waiting for, the first real evidence of the fate of Russia's last imperial family, the Romanovs. But as scientists began their work, it was clear this discovery raised as many questions as it answered. You see, there were supposed to be 11 victims from that dreadful night in 1918. Tsar Nicholas II, his wife Alexandra, their five children and four loyal attendants. But only nine bodies were present. The two youngest children, 13-year-old Tsaras, Revich Alexei and one of his sisters, were missing. This discovery kicked off one of the most significant forensic investigations in history. The central question was simple. Were these really the Romanovs? To find out, scientists turned to a revolutionary tool, DNA analysis. The process was painstaking. They needed to extract viable genetic material from bones that were nearly a century old. But what many overlooked was the need for a royal comparison. The investigators reached out to the British royal family and Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, agreed to help. His maternal grandmother was Alexandra's older sister, meaning he shared a direct maternal genetic line with the last Tsarina. When scientists compared Prince Philip's mitochondrial DNA, a type of DNA passed down from mother to child, to the DNA from the remains of the adult female and the three young women in the grave, the result was a perfect match. It was conclusive proof the woman in the grave was Tsarina Alexandra, and three of her daughters were with her. For Tsar Nicholas, the proof came from a different, almost unbelievable source. Scientists managed to get DNA from his long-deceased brother, Grand Duke George Alexandrovich. The comparison confirmed that the adult male in the grave was indeed the last Tsar of Russia. The world finally had confirmation. The bones were those of the Romanovs and their staff, but the initial relief of solving part of the mystery quickly gave way to a darker reality. The state of the remains told a grim story. The skeleton showed signs of extreme violence. Skulls were fractured, some bones had bayonet marks, and even more disturbing, they had been doused with sulfuric acid in a crude attempt to destroy them. The most shocking fact, however, remained the absence of Alexei and one of his sisters. Their disappearance from the mass grave reignited the very legends the discovery was supposed to end. Had they somehow escaped? But even with this breakthrough, the story wasn't over. Not even close. Pretenders to the throne. With two children missing from the grave, the world clung to the one story it wanted to believe, the legend of Anastasia. For decades, the idea that the youngest Romanov daughter had survived the events in the basement became a global obsession. You see, the chaos of the Russian Revolution created a perfect storm for rumors. In the years after 1918, with the new Soviet government releasing very little information, whispers of Romanov survival spread like wildfire across Europe. It was a fairy tale in reverse, a lost princess stripped of her identity, waiting to be rediscovered, and many people were crazy about finding her. This desperate hope created a stage for a parade of pretenders, women who came forward claiming to be the lost Grand Duchess. But none captured the world's imagination quite like Anna Anderson. She surfaced in Berlin in 1920, a mysterious young woman pulled from a canal after a failed attempt to end her life. 
She refused to give her name and was placed in an asylum. It was there that she began to hint and later insist that she was Anastasia. Her story was compelling. She had scars she claimed were from bayonet wounds and an intimate knowledge of the imperial court that was hard to dismiss. For over 60 years, Anna Anderson fought a legal battle to be recognized as Anastasia. She convinced some former Romanov servants and even a few distant relatives. Her case became an international sensation, spawning books, plays, and movies. People wanted to believe. The thought of a single survivor offered a glimmer of light in an otherwise dark and brutal story. The thing nobody tells you is that this hope was so powerful it often overshadowed the facts. Experts pointed out inconsistencies in her story. Her inability to speak Russian was a major red flag, and many who knew the real Anastasia were adamant that Anderson was an imposter. But Anna Anderson was just the most famous of the pretenders. Dozens of others came forward over the years, each claiming to be one of the lost children. There was a man who claimed to be Alexei and women who insisted they were Maria, Olga, or Tatiana. Each claim fueled the global debate and kept the mystery alive. To put it mildly, the Romanov myth was a full-blown industry. It was a story of survival against all odds, a testament to the endurance of royalty. What many overlooked is that this entire legend was built on a foundation of uncertainty, on the simple fact that there were no bodies to prove the official story. The discovery of the first grave in 1991 should have put an end to it. It proved that at least three of the daughters had perished. But the absence of the other two just made the mythmakers focus their hope on Alexei and the remaining daughter. Science had provided some answers, but it had also left the door open for the most persistent mystery of all. Doubts and Discoveries The 1991 discovery was a bombshell, but the science behind it was even more incredible. You see, this was one of the first times in history that ancient DNA was used to solve such a high-profile case. And you can see this everywhere now in modern forensics, but back then it was like something out of science fiction. The challenge was immense. The DNA in the bones was over 70 years old and badly degraded, broken into tiny fragments. Scientists had to use a technique called polymerase chain reaction, or PCR, to amplify these tiny fragments into a large enough sample to analyze. Think of it like finding a single sentence torn into individual letters and having a machine that can photocopy those letters millions of times until you can piece the sentence back together. The connection to Prince Philip was the key to identifying the Tsarina and her daughters. But confirming the Tsar's identity presented a shocking, unexpected problem that almost derailed the entire investigation. The Tsar's DNA showed a rare genetic quirk called heteroplasmy. In simple terms, it means he had two slightly different types of mitochondrial DNA in his cells when most people have only one. This anomaly made it difficult to get a 100% conclusive match with his known relatives at first. For a moment, it looked like the doubters might be right. This strange genetic signature fueled conspiracy theories that the bodies were fakes, planted by the authorities. To settle the issue, scientists needed an undisputed sample of the Tsar's DNA. The solution was incredible. They located a shirt Nicholas had worn after an assassination attempt in Japan in 1891. The shirt was still stained with his blood. They extracted DNA from that decades-old blood stain, and it showed the exact same rare heteroplasmy. The case was sealed. Even after the identities were confirmed, the shadow of the two missing children hung over everything. The scientific evidence from the first grave had already painted a grim picture. The acid, the violence, the calculated cruelty. It was undeniable. Most of the family had met a brutal end and DNA had laid bare what history could only hint at for decades. Yet for 16 long years, Alexei and his sister remained ghosts in the story. Where had they gone? Had someone spirited them away, leaving the world to imagine an impossible survival? Or had they perished in some other hidden tragedy? The science, as precise and powerful as it was, had reached its limit. All it could tell researchers with certainty was that the children weren't in that first grave. Beyond that, the truth seemed lost, buried under layers of speculation and unanswered questions. And then the final clue appeared. Not in a lab, not in dusty archives, but out there, back in the same dark forest where the nightmare had begun. 
Just a short distance from the original pit, something was discovered that would finally break the long silence. The revelation wasn't just another data point, it was the key that had eluded investigators for years. The mystery, once thought unsolvable, had been waiting all along, hidden in plain sight among the trees and shadows. Science had returned to the scene, and there, in the cold, quiet forest, it delivered the answer. The final chapter of the Romanov story was waiting under 200 feet of dirt, leaves, and 90 years of silence. No survivors, the end of hope. In the summer of 2007, a group of amateur researchers, unwilling to let the mystery go, returned to the woods near Yekaterinburg. They were convinced the answer was still out there, and they were right. About 230 feet away from the main grave, they found a second, much smaller burial site. It was little more than a depression in the earth. Inside, they discovered 44 charred bone fragments and several teeth. The remains were in terrible condition, far worse than the others. They had clearly been burned at a very high temperature and then smashed into pieces. It was a scene of utter desecration. The bones were immediately sent for DNA analysis at two of the world's leading labs, including one run by the U.S. Armed Forces. The world held its breath. The results were swift, conclusive, and heartbreaking. Mitochondrial DNA testing proved the remains belonged to two individuals who were maternally related to Sarina Alexandra. Then, nuclear DNA testing confirmed that these two were the biological children of both Nicholas and Alexandra. One was a young male and the other a young female. Dental analysis and skeletal development showed their ages matched those of Sarovich Alexei and one of his older sisters, believed to be Maria. The puzzle was complete. The science was irrefutable. Every single member of the Romanov family had been located. The legend of Anastasia, the hopes for Alexei's survival, the century of myths, it all came crashing down. There were no survivors, not one. People drawn to a story like this often hope for a hidden conspiracy, a tangled web of secrets and betrayals. They imagine shadowy figures plotting in whispers, someone slipping through the cracks to survive against impossible odds. But the truth was far simpler and far darker than any fiction could conjure. The DNA didn't just identify the bodies, it confirmed the terrifying accounts of the men who ended their lives. These weren't mistakes, accidental deaths, or random violence. Every action had a cruel purpose. They separated two of the bodies from the main group, a calculated move designed to confuse anyone who might stumble upon the mass grave. Then, in a frantic, desperate attempt to erase their existence, they burned them not just destroyed, but reduced to almost nothing, as if the very flames could obliterate the memory of their lives. There is no missing piece here, no hidden hero, no miraculous survival. The evidence leaves only one conclusion, an entire family, ranging from the 49-year-old czar to the 13-year-old boy, was methodically wiped out in a single night of brutal, chaotic violence. The act wasn't quick, it wasn't merciful. It was deliberate, systematic, and horrifying in its efficiency. And yet, for decades, the world had only fragments of the truth, shadows of rumors, and whispered theories. Now science is filled in the blanks, and it's not comforting. DNA doesn't lie, and it tells a story that historians, writers, and thrill-seekers alike struggle to face. This is a story without redemption. There are no clever escapes, no last-minute rescues, no hidden diaries revealing a secret survival. There is only the cold, hard finality that comes from evidence, from proof, from the unflinching gaze of modern science. The mystery is solved, but the answer is worse than anyone could have imagined. Annihilation, absolute and total, of every life in that household. It's a story of human cruelty, of desperation, of a night that ended not in whispers or secrets, but in the silent, irrefutable truth that even power and privilege cannot protect against the finality of death. DNA has told us what we could never fully grasp before, and the revelation is as chilling as the night itself. There is no comfort in knowing it. Only the stark, undeniable fact that an entire lineage was erased, leaving behind nothing but evidence, questions, and the echo of horror. The Romanov story is finally closed, but the debate continues. Does knowing the grim truth offer any real justice? Let us know your thoughts below. Don't forget to like and subscribe.